Yo, what's up, fam? Y'all good? Okay, all right. Got some clappers over here on the left. Let's go. Come on. Uh, hey, my name's Nathan. I'm uh, one of the pastors here. If I hadn't had a chance to meet you yet, thanks for crashing a party. Everybody watching online, what's up with you? Even though you're not here, we love you. We're glad uh, that you're a part of it. Uh, I want to talk to you about something today that is by far the most frequently asked question that I get as a pastor. I get uh, emails, phone calls, text messages, reach out on social media. This is, I would argue, this question, this subject that we're going to talk about today is more asked about than all of the other topics and subjects. I would say combined. This is what people say, hey, if you could teach me one thing, this is what I would want you to teach me. And I uh, personally believe this is one of the most important things uh, that I can teach you. I've taught on this a few different times, and I've said that before. I've, I've told people, this, hey, check this out. This is one of the most important things that I can teach you. And I always get calls about that. It's like, well, it should be other things. And like, I'm, I'm good with it, man. I think this is so important. What we're going to talk about today in Acts chapter 10 is how you can hear from God. Get more text. Hey, Nathan, how do I know that it's God's voice? How can I distinguish between God's voice and my voice and my mom's voice and culture's voice and all of the other voices? Nathan, I got decisions. How do I know what God wants me to do? How, how can I know that it's God opening up a door? Which job should I take? Who should I marry? What should I major in? I got a big decision. What house should I move in? Should I take this? Should I do this? How do I know, Nathan, that it's God? Like, teach me how to hear God's voice. So this morning, that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about how to hear God's voice. It'll be an absolute game changer for your life. Like, I don't know if you're interested in that or not. Like, how would you like to know if you had a question or a prayer or a decision or something on your heart and mind that you needed to do, and you're just like, man, I would just love to know God's opinion about it. What if I told you you could know that, that you could hear God's voice anytime that you wanted to? Uh, it's, it's possible. Growing up, um, my mom came to every sporting event that my brother and I ever did. Home games, away games. We played all kinds of sports. Um, soccer, basketball, hockey, baseball, tennis. Like, we did it all, and my mom was always there. Now, my mom and dad are totally different. If you ever met Mama Klein and Big Chief, you know they are absolutely, totally different. Big Chief, I've never heard my dad raise his voice his entire life, and it wasn't because I was well-behaved. I can promise you that. Uh, like, he's just never, I've never heard him yell. Like, the, the most excited my dad will ever get, like, if I was playing baseball and I hit a home run, this is my dad. Yeah. That's it. Like, that's the volume right there. And it was louder now because I was in the microphone. Was like, yeah. <laughs> now, Mama Klein, there could be a baseball complex with nine different fields. And it didn't matter what field she was on, I could hear her. I could pick her voice out. And she, she didn't let the fact that a lot of times my mom didn't know the rules, she didn't let that stop her from cheering us on. Uh, like there would be times where like I, we would make a mistake, my brother and I would, would drop a ball, and my mom didn't know that we weren't supposed to drop the ball, and she'd be like, yeah, Nathan, let's go. And somebody would tell her, like, well, he, that's an error. <laughs> it's okay, Nathan, you'll get it next time. Shake it off. Man, I just love it. And, and I could pick, no matter where she was in the stands, I could pick her voice out. Maybe you had a mom like that. Maybe you had a yeller as a mom. But I could, I could pick my mom's voice out no matter where she was because I had a closeness with her. Like I knew my mom. I'd heard my mom's voice so often in so many different scenarios. No matter how many other moms were in the room, I could always pick out my mom. And if you're a mom, uh, you, the same thing works with your kids. Like if, if, if you were to walk downstairs and you had a baby downstairs and there was 10 babies crying uh, and your baby was crying, moms would know that's my baby. Like if only one baby was crying, like you know that's not my baby. You just know their cry. There's this closeness. There's this intimacy that we have. And I'm telling you, you can have that with God. You can have intimacy with God so much so that when God speaks to you, you can know that it's him. Interested? 
Like, would you like to know? Like, you got a question, you got a prayer, you got a decision. What if you could understand and know the voice of God and have that intimacy with Him? Um, now, what's word, weird, like some of you, when I, when I say intimacy with God, you're already like, uh, no, brother, no. Like, it's a weird word that we use because when we think of intimacy, we think of a physical relationship. Like, it's the absolute closest physical relationship that, that someone could, could have between two people. And so I want you to remove that because you're thinking just like intimacy with God. Whoa, what kind of church is this? What is he talking about? Like, I'm not talking about that. Remove your cultural presuppositions of what you think about intimacy is. And let me just give you this, this dictionary definition of intimacy. It's this close, personal, detailed, knowledgeable, loving, and deep. What if those words could describe your relationship with God? Intimate is not just a physical relationship. Intimacy with someone is knowing them and having a, the depth of relationship, being close, like pursuing them, leaning, wanting to know everything about them. That's how you develop intimacy, and you and I can develop that with God. So if you're here today and you've got questions about life, about relationships, about finances, about job, about the overall direction in your life, uh, I would be willing to bet that if you knew that there was an all-knowing, all-being, all-powerful God of the universe that knew every aspect of your life, I bet that you would want to hear from him. That if he spoke to you, that you would want to know what his voice sounded like. For when you had those requests and those prayers and you wanted to know the next steps and the direction for your life. And if there was an all-knowing, all-powerful all present being, and he knew everything about your life, not only what would happen, but when it would happen, wouldn't you want to know it? I mean, come on, God, like, that's the least you can do. Like, tell me, what's going to happen? How long am I going to have to wait? When is it going to happen? What is it going to look like? All of that is connected to you and, and my ability to hear and discern the voice of God. So I can't tell you the answer for what you're praying for. All those questions that you've got for God, I can't tell you the answer for those. But through this text, I can show you how your intimacy level with God can get to a, a, a depth so that when he speaks, I'm, seeing, I'm talking about God can say one word to you and you can immediately know that it's him. And you won't have to worry about, is it me? Am I just thinking that? Like, where is that voice coming from? Like, wh wh what would lead me in that direction? Like, that's, that's what I'm offering you today. So if you're interested in that, we're going to do Acts chapter 10. You want some clarity? You want to know God's voice and purpose in your life? Acts chapter 10 is where we're going to start today. And uh, I want to introduce you uh, to, to two different people and talk about the connection and the depth that you can have with God and understanding how to hear his voice. Here's what verse 1 says. At Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius, that's a cool name, a centurion of what was known as the Italian cohort, a devout man who feared God with all of his household. He gave alms generously to the people and prayed continually to God. About the ninth hour of the day, he saw clearly in a, in a vision an angel of God come in and say to him, Cornelius, Cornelius, all the pregnant moms in here. Cornelius, that'd be a good name for a son if you got one. Coming in, coming in hot. Unique name. Here's the first thing I want you to write down is this. Uh, first thing you got to understand about intimacy and closeness to God as it, as it pertains to hearing God's voice. You cannot fake intimacy with God. Can't fake it. It's real, it's there, or, or it's not. Listen to how Cornelius was um, defined here, the characteristics of his life. In those three verses, it says he was a devout man, feared God, gave generously, and prayed continually. Uh, Cornelius was able to distinguish the voice of God in his life because he had already established some intimacy with him. He had already established a relationship with him. Um, here's, the, here's the words, devout man. So Cornelius was, uh, he was a, a, a Jew, so he was following God like they were in the Old Testament. That means that he had the, the Ten Commandments, he nailed those, did those all the time. Jewish dietary laws. Um, so he only ate certain things because he was following rules with God. Um, he would, uh, always doing the right things. Like for, for Old Testament people, the connection with God was about following the rules and doing what he said. He feared God with all of his household. He, he embodied that verse in Joshua that said, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Hey, my wife, my kids, 
Everybody, we're going to fear God. There's going to be an awe of God. There's going to be a respect from God. And, and that's how we're going to run our house. He gave alms generously. This was a dude that lived his life open-handed. He said, everything I have is from God. And so I'm going to share those things with people so that they can experience God in a personal way and, and, and in their life. And so, man, there's so many countless stories about people that gave generously and lived their life open-handed, and God would speak to them in very clear ways. Close relationship with God connected to that generosity. And then finally, it says he prayed continually. Kind of basic, right? You're never going to have a, a close relationship with somebody that you never talk to. If you don't text them, if you don't call them, if you don't meet up with them, if you don't talk to them frequently, like you're never going to develop the depth. And so Cornelius was the guy that prayed continually to God, talking to him constantly. Sometimes as Christians, man, we can get into this mindset that we only want to talk to God when we're in a jam. Uh, that we're like when, when our back's up against the wall, then we're like ringing the bell. Now, Cornelius, every day, ups and downs, it didn't matter. Every day, he was praying continuously, keeping the line of communication up with God. And, and in verse 4, here's the game changer. Here's the verse, man, that if, if you don't think that you want this, verse 4 sticks out. He says, God says one word to him. God says his name, Cornelius. And he stared at him in terror and said, What is it, Lord? And the Lord said to him, Your prayers and your alms have ascended as a memorial before God. God spoke one word to Cornelius. And Cornelius was so close to God, he immediately knew who he was talking to. Man, how great does that sound? Because there's times where we hear voices and we're like, God, is that God's voice? Is it my voice? Like, how can I tell? What, this guy was so close to God that God just said his name. And he immediately looked up and said, hey, Lord, I know that's you. Like, we've talked enough. I know your voice. And so he immediately, all right, so this is an important conversation. God is getting ready to speak to me and give me some instructions. He knew God intimately. Verse 5 says like, like this. And now, here's, here's his instructions. Here's what I want to share with you. Here's what I want to tell you. Now, send some men to Joppa and bring, on, uh, bring one Simon, who is called Peter. He's lodging with one Simon, a tanner, whose house is by the sea. When the angel who spoke to him had departed, he called two of his servants and a devout soldier from among them who attended him. And having related everything to them, he sent them to Joppa. Now, there's some names in this that's confusing. And uh, like, I actually think it's on purpose because there's going to be many times in your life where God speaks to you and it's very confusing. It doesn't make sense. And you, like, you're going to have to learn. That's part of the discernment process when God speaks to you. Um, so he gave um, Cornelius some instructions. He says, I want you to go to this man's house, his, the man's name is Simon, and it's uh, Simon the Tanner. And Cornelius is like, Simon Tanner, is that his last name? He's like, no, nah, Tanner's not his last name. He's a tanner. He, work, like he works with leather. Uh, and so that Simon the Tanner, but there's going to be another dude there that's named Simon. Not the same Simon Tanner. This guy's name is Simon, but here's the kicker. They call him Peter. So side note, this might be you, and if it's you, you're going to be offended. That's fine. Uh, we're equal opportunity. We'll offend everybody if you stay here long enough. But there are, some, there are some moms that like to do this. They like to give their kid a first name and a middle name, but they're going to call the kid by the middle name, even though it's not their first name. And this is what Cornelius is like, yeah, the guy's name is Simon, but everybody calls him Peter. They're like, well, why did his mom call him Simon Peter, but they're going to call him Peter? Why did he just call him by his first name if that's what his first name is going to be? And God's like, I know, right? Those moms are weird. I don't know what's going on, man. That's why I have to clarify it. It's Simon Peter, but everybody calls him Peter's name's not really Simon. It's a two Simon. Simon's house, who's a tanner who lives by the ocean, which means he should be a fisherman, but he's a tanner. Simon number one, go to his house, find Simon number two, whose name is not Simon. It's Peter. Ask for Peter. That's where you're going. None of it made sense. You got it? And Cornelius just looks at God and says, got it. Yep, I, I, will, I will do exactly that. So he says, I want you to go to Simon's house. And, and now God has set up the story. And so now the next verse, God switches the narrative. He says, all right, so now that I've told you about Simon Peter, whose name is Simon, we call him Peter. I need to tell you about Peter. So verse 9 says this, the next day as they were on their journey and approaching the city, Peter went up on the housetop about the sixth hour to pray. Peter, who's Simon, but he's Peter. And he became hungry and wanted something to eat. But while they were preparing it, he fell into a trance and saw the heavens open. You ever been so hungry like you get delusional? 
Like you, some of you get hangry. Like some of you just start to space out and uh, like crawl into a ball and rock back and forth. Like Peter's having one of these episodes. He fell into a trance and saw the heavens open and something like a great sheet descending, being let down by its four corners upon the earth. In it were all kinds of animals and reptiles and birds of the air. And there came a voice to him, rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, by no means, Lord, for I've never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice came to him again a second time. What God has made clean, do not call common. This happened three times and the thing was taken up at once into heaven. See, once you have the ability to recognize that God is speaking to you, that's only half the battle. Because once you know that it's God speaking, you still have to listen and do what he says. Cornelius hears God's voice and immediately says, yes, Lord, I'll do it. Peter hears God's voice, immediately recognizes that it's God's voice, and tells God no. Rise, Peter, stand up, kill this food, and you can eat it. Cornelius says, yes, Lord, Peter says, by no means, <laughs> a.k.a., man, you crazy. Man, I'm not, I, am not, I am not doing this. Cornelius knew it was God speaking and immediately obeyed. See, the reality is for some of us, we don't have an intimacy problem. It's not that we don't recognize God's voice. We just don't do what he says. It's not an intimacy problem. It's an obedience problem. We ask God a question and, 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 and have a prayer, and God gives us a direct answer, and we're like, mm, I don't like that answer. Let me pray again. Let me pretend like I didn't hear you say that. And then we're praying and people are like, well, did God not answer? He's like, yeah, no, he's not answering. Like, I can't hear. I don't know. Like, I've been asking. I've been praying and God's like, I'm speaking to you. Like, you're not listening. Like, listen to me and do what I say, right? And that's how we get with God sometimes. And we will trick ourselves into thinking God's not speaking and God's not listening. And no, God's like, no, nah, I've told you a thousand times. You just don't want to do it. And you keep praying, thinking I'm going to change my mind. I'm God. I don't need to change my mind. I wasn't wrong the first time. Peter, three different times, God tells him to do something, and Peter's like, nah, I don't know about that. Nah, man, that, that, really, that really doesn't make sense. Second thing I want you to write down, fr intimacy is more than just following the rules. Intimacy is more than just following the rules. It's more than just jump through hoops. Now, this, this dream is very important. I need to unpack this dream for us because Acts chapter 10, if it weren't for Acts chapter 10, there would be no Christian churches in the state of North Carolina. You need to understand about this because before Acts chapter 10, no Christians were allowed to eat pork. It was unclean. Can you imagine if like, there was a rule, if the Pope of North Carolina just decided that, oh, Christian churches can't eat pork anymore? I'd quit. I wouldn't be a pastor anymore. I'd be like, well, I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. I don't want to do this anymore. No, this is, this is the moment where, like, there were certain foods that were unclean that people couldn't eat if they wanted to have a relationship with God. And Peter knows those rules. And he's like, nah, nah, God, I need to do the right thing. I need rules and regulations so that I can get to you and be close to you. And God speaks to Peter in a dream, and it's like a picnic blanket is ascending from the sky. And it's filled with all of these animals that Peter, come on, now you know Peter always wanted to taste what bacon tasted like. But he was like, you know, I'm not going to do it because I'm following God. And God looks at him and says, hey, that pig right there, oh, it's yours. Look, bacon and pork chops and pulled pork and pork rinds and it's all yours. And if I were Peter, I'd be like, praise God. <laughs> praise God. But Peter's like, no, I can't do that, man. Because Peter was fixated on the rules. And rules is not what gets you close to God. Jesus blew all that up. Jesus decided that we didn't need a priest. We don't need a middleman to get us to God. Now, because of Jesus' sacrifice on the cross, we have direct access to God now. In fact, the Bible says you can't even get to God unless you go through his son, Jesus. And so Peter is, is convinced, now nah, the only reason I can get close to God is if I do enough and, and say enough and give enough and go enough and follow all the rules. And God's like, nah, man, intimacy with God comes through a relationship. And that relationship comes through Jesus. So forget the rules, pursue the man. Relationship with Jesus, getting closer to him. 
Now notice um, God, what God asked both of the men to do. Cornelius, go out, and I want you to hang out with this Jewish guy uh, named Peter. And then he looks at Peter, and he says, now I want you to rise up, and I want you to eat these things that you know you're not supposed to do. None of it makes sense at all. And again, man, if you don't understand that a relationship with Jesus is freeing you from those rules and giving you freedom in Christ, then, man, you don't have a relationship with God. You don't have intimacy with him without Jesus. Verse 17, here's how the passage closed. Now, now while Peter was inwardly perplexed as to what this vision that he had seen might mean, behold, the men who were sent by Cornelius, having made inquiry for Simon's house, stood at the gate and called out to ask whether Simon, who was called Peter, was lodging there. And while Peter was pondering the vision, the Spirit said to him, Behold, three men are looking for you. It's like the very first ring doorbell. They have, they're just outside, and the Holy Spirit says, Ding! Three men are outside. Look at the screen. Rise, that's just how I read the Bible. Rise and go down. It's wild. Rise and go down and accompany them without hesitation, for I have sent them. And Peter went down to the men and said, I am the one whom you are looking for. What is the reason for your coming? And they said, Cornelius, a centurion, an upright and God-fearing man who is well spoken of by the whole Jewish nation, was directed by a holy angel to send for you to come to this house and to hear what you have to say. So Peter invited them in to be his guest. The next day he rose and went away with him and some of his brothers from Joppa accompanied him. Third thing that I want you to get is, is this intimacy and a closeness with God. The ability to hear God's voice is an ongoing process. It's not a one-time event. Now think about Peter here. Peter, this is the same Peter in the Gospels that was like Jesus' top three. Jesus is not supposed to have favorites. He had favorites. Peter, James, and John. He's up on the Mount of Transfiguration with Peter, James, and John. He's praying in the garden with Peter, James, and John. Peter's the one that walks on water really close. Um, Peter's the one that denies Jesus, but after Jesus' resurrection, Jesus looks at Peter and said, it's on this rock. Peter, I'm going to start my church on you. This is Jesus' boy. So you would think they were really close, but just years later, Peter was already at a point where Jesus was speaking to him, and Peter was like, now say what now? Uh, I don't know about, you would think they had been through so much in the past that any time that God spoke to Peter, Peter would be like, yep, I got it, but that's not how it works. You got to stay at it. It's not just a one-time decision. It's just like friendship. We could have been friend, fi friends five years ago, but if I don't continue to develop the relationship, then eventually we're going to go our separate ways. You're going you're gonna to change so much. You're just going to be totally different. And I'm not going to have that connection with you anymore. And it's the same thing with you and God. I don't know if you consider yourself like right now, if this is a dry season. I get that from people. I mean, Nathan, I just feel like I'm in a dry season. Well, the intimacy dried up. There's not a closeness and a connection. Well, I used to hear God and I used to feel God and I used to be really close with God. Well, I can tell you what happened. The intimacy fell off. The closeness, the connection, the desire, the pursuit fell off. God didn't move. You did. Come back to it. It's an ongoing process. You and I never arrive. There'll never be a point where you don't have to pursue God anymore, that you're here and you've arrived and you've, you've made it to the top. That'll never happen. Even with Peter, he had to continue. It says he was sitting there perplexed, like in his room, like, was that God? What did he say? What was all of that? And I wonder, birds, reptiles, pigs, all these animals, what's going on here? continued, had to seek it, had to seek the Lord. That's going to be a part of our process as well. Fourth thing, write this down. Intimacy involves trust. Your connection with God, your ability to hear God's voice is always going to involve trust. I think it's really interesting that both of these men were told something that they didn't understand. They didn't know all of the details. And honestly, everything that God said made little to no sense. Ever been there before? Ever been praying and asking God, and you feel like you hear an answer, and like the answer is like, there's a sheet that drops down from heaven with bacon on it, and there you go. Like, oh, good, God, thank you. Like, can you send somebody to interpret that dream? Like, what, what's going on here? It doesn't make sense. It didn't make sense for Cornelius. Go to this guy's house and just wait there. Who's the guy? Man, just go. Just go. He's staying at somebody else's house. Where, all the details that you're telling me, what does that have to do with anything? Dude, just go. There's going to reach a point in your life where you're listening to God, and in order to do what he says, you're going to have to trust him. You're just going to have to trust, hey man, what he's saying is right. He knows what he's talking about. He's got a plan. He's got a purpose in all of it, so I'm, going to, I'm actually going to trust him with it. 
And then at the last part of the story, he begins to bring it all together. Peter had no idea why he was having this dream. Cornelius had no idea why he was going to this house. And then all of a sudden, it dawns on them, God brought Peter to talk to Cornelius so that Peter could tell him about Jesus. And Cornelius needed to know about Jesus, and the guy that God wanted to use was Peter, and so he orchestrated it all together. Do you know that's how God works in your life too? There are divine opportunities that God will put in your path. And man, this makes me really nervous. But I don't even want to think about the opportunities that I've missed, that God put somebody right in front of me that was ready to have their life radically changed by Jesus. And God was like, all right, Nathan, here you go. I'm going to set it up. You spike it down. And I didn't know that it was God speaking to me. And I might have missed an opportunity for someone's life to be changed because I wasn't paying attention. Because I didn't know that it was God speaking. And God does that all the time with your life and my life. Man, he's waiting on us. Hey, I want to involve you in the process. You're going to be a part of life change through Jesus. People far from God coming into a relationship with him. And some days you're Cornelius. And some days you're going to be Peter. And both of them have to listen. And God can bring it all together. And then for us, it's this moment where it's like, wow. So this is what God was doing. And sometimes that involves listening to God and doing what he says and trusting God. It doesn't make sense. I don't know why I'm going here. I don't know why I'm giving this. I don't know why I'm doing it. I'm just going to have to trust you. And you'll only get trust when you get intimacy. I mean, think about your closest relationships, times in your life where the intimacy left. It started with breaking trust. Man, if someone breaks your trust, that's the first thing that leaves is intimacy, the closeness that you have with them. All of a sudden, you want to keep them at arm's distance. You don't believe anything that they have to say. Like, you're skeptical about everything. But with intimacy with God comes this level of trust that no matter what God says, you're like, he's got to be right. He's never been wrong. He's never let me down. Like, I've never done what God told me to do and got on the other end of it and regretted it. Now, there's been plenty of times in my life where I did what I wanted to do and got to the very end and thought, that was the wrong thing to do. I should have listened to God, but I didn't. Learned the hard way. But never was a time where I felt like God was telling me to do something and I did it, and I got on the back end and be like, well, that wasn't what I thought it was going to be. Or that wasn't worth it. It's never happened. And so all of a sudden, the story begins to unfold. Now we've got Peter that's telling Cornelius. Cornelius then realizes that it's not about rules and it's not about relationship. And Peter walks in the door with, you know, barbecue. He's got, he's got chopped plate from Little Richards. And he's just like, look, God sent me here with this. This is what we're doing now. This is awesome. Welcome to the family. Coming to, it's not just about Jews anymore. It's about Gentiles, people that are outside of God's family, coming into God's family through Jesus. It's not about like dietary rules and whether or not you're circumcised or who your dad was and whether you eat meat or not. Like all of that is gone. Let me introduce you to this guy named Jesus. Last thing for you to jot down is, is this. Here's the challenging part. It's put a little urgency in us right now. Intimacy doesn't happen overnight. You cannot develop it. You cannot cram spirituality. Look, I'm a procrastinator. I have did some of my best work in school waiting until the last minute. Made plenty of A's on paper writing it the night before. Stayed up all night long studying for tests. Aced it. There's just something like I'm, I'm a thrive under pressure guy. You can't do that with God. You can't wait to develop a relationship with God when everything hits the fan. You can't wait until everything falls apart to then begin to initiate this conversation with him. And when you think about it, that's how a lot of people are. Man, when, when we're ready to break the glass and pull the fire alarm down, we're like, I, I should probably talk to God. <laughs> Might be a good time to ring him. And then, I mean, think about that. Think about how awkward that is. When you don't have a relationship with someone, but you need something from them. I had a friend of mine that I haven't talked to probably in five or six years. Um, he used to live here in Winston, and he moved uh, to Texas, and he just called me out of the blue uh, the other day. And uh, like, five or six years and his name pops up and I'm just like okay well, part of me was like okay this might be an emergency so let me pick this up and uh and he just picked it up he's like hey man how's it going I just wanted to reach out to you and connect again I was like oh great awesome man how are you he was asking about the family and he was asking about the church and like it was just a great conversation I was like man this is fantastic and then he said hey um just heads up I recently got a new job and uh, I work for an insurance agency. Oh, 
okay. And I just figured you'd be the type of guy that would be interested in life insurance. Now, I don't know if that was a fat joke or what. Like, I was just like, why do, why do you think I need life insurance, man? And it was so weird because I was like, oh, so that's the reason you called. It wasn't because, like, you cared about my family or you wanted to catch up or you wanted to know what was going on in the church. Like, you're a salesman. It's like, oh, this is kind of awkward. And the reality is we can get like that with God sometimes. It's been so long since we've reached out to him. We're like, hey, God, how are you? Boy, that sunrise sure was beautiful this morning. So... Don't know if you noticed, but I'm kind of having a bit of a crisis down here. Just wanted to see if you could help. That's not a relationship. That's not what God desires. Like he desires intimacy, the connection, not to hear your voice when everything goes wrong, but you can't cram it. You can't wait for that moment. And so I don't know where you're at right now. Maybe you're like really high on cloud nine and your relationship with Jesus is thriving and, and you're just like, man, this is really good. Like I'm, I'm, I'm tracking with you. I can aim in all five of those points. Maybe you're on the opposite end and you're like, you, you, you hear these five points. You're just like, man, I am way off. I wouldn't know God's voice if he stood up on the stage and said some my name right now. I wouldn't know that it was him. I would still doubt. Either way, all of us have the same next step. Pursue it now. Pursue the intimacy now. Develop the closeness and strengthen and deepen the relationship now. You can do that. You can have that. And my hope and goal is just like with Cornelius, one day God can say one word to you and you will immediately know that it's him. And when he speaks, just like Cornelius, you will be immediately obedient to that because you've developed the trust with him. And you understand that it's not about rules, it's about a relationship with Jesus. And because of that, I can have direct access to God. And that radically changes everything about your life. The process precedes the product. Whatever you have right now, spiritually, with God, is a result of the process that you've gone through over these past seasons. So start it now. You want a different product? Change the process. Right now, make the commitment. You're going to pursue God in a way that you've never pursued Him before. You're going to focus on developing that relationship. God's already opened up the door. Like you're, if you're a Christian, like I'm not talking about earning your way to God and, and earning a relationship with him. I'm, I'm talking about how to grow that relationship so that you know and recognize and understand his, his voice. Um, I don't want your prayer life to be like, God, I, I promise I'll do more. I promise I'll go to church more. Like if you just listen to me and hear me now, I promise I'll give more. I, I promise I'll serve more. Like, God, I just need some help. Just like get me, get me out of this jam. Start pursuing God now. Build the relationship now. Have a desire for intimacy with God now because your ability to hear his voice is directly related to your intimacy level with him. And understanding how to hear God's voice will answer every question that you have about every area of your life. I'm telling you, it's a game changer maybe one of the most important things that I can teach you how to do as a follower of Jesus. God, help us right now to hear your voice, to search your word, to develop the relationship with you, to put in the hard work now so that when you speak to us in the midst of a thousand other voices that are loud all the way around us, we would be able to distinctly hear and know yours above everyone else. And God, for those that have been praying and asking questions and calling out to you, God, would you just give us a refresher on the answer? And we're going to commit to be obedient to it right now. God, we're going to stop asking you whether or not you want to change your mind or stop asking you to clarify yourself or, or stop saying, God, I don't like that answer. Can you give us another one? And God, we're just going to take our next step today. We're just going to trust you and step forward in obedience. Would you just remind us of what our next step is? Uh, and we'll be faithful with it. We'll steward it well and take that next step. God, thanks for speaking to us. Thanks for being a God that desires a relationship with us. Uh, God, give us the wisdom to know what to do with the words that we've heard and the boldness to hear from you and to take the next step in obedience. Pray and ask those things in your son Jesus' name.